Our next guest remains bullish on gold, especially because he says data shows healthy inflation has returned. Where could the metal be headed next? Joining us now is U.S. Global Investor CEO Frank Holmes. Frank, uh, long time, uh, no speak. Thanks for joining us on uh, Kiko's uh, Gold Report. Well, you've been having a wonderful travel time, the Vegas, the Freedom Festival. Right, Fantastic. and a little vacation, but now back to work. So let's talk about gold and about inflation. Uh, the core PCE index is up in the first half of the year. You also say oil is moving from an inflation headwind to tailwind. Where can inflation data go from here? And of course, most importantly, what could this mean for gold here, Frank? Well, we talked about this many months ago regarding uh, uh, this inflationary number, because that's what drives negative rates. So you, if you get rising inflationary numbers and the yields don't rise, that means you're going to get negative interest rates. And the greater the negative interest rates, like in September of 2011, when gold hit 1900, was minus 3% for the 10-year government. We're not there and we're far away from 2011, but we're in that trend because we have a weak global economy, which doesn't give much flexibility to raise rates but we're seeing this inflation show up. So it appears to be this classic word, stagflation, which plagued the global scene in the, in the 70s. But, but Frank, let me ask you, you know, crude dipped below $40 a barrel on Monday on continued worries of oversupply. So could inflation really be picking up here? Sure. Uh, it's always a lagging indicator uh, what's taking place with the price of oil. But Daniela, it's the regulations that are everywhere. The whole idea of Brexit was, was to get away from the suffocation of regulations. And the global regulatory scene continues to grow. So that ends up showing up in inflation. So you, and that's where I think you're seeing uh, these numbers percolate. Frank, is gold overvalued now, trading over 1350 as we speak? No, no, no. And listen, if you want to know the upside, uh, ask uh, Rickards and he'll tell you it's 10000 uh, ask other people that use money supply as a factor, and they'll say 7,800. So I, I don't think that uh, gold is overvalued at this level. But I think it's important that gold is going to get, in this seasonal pattern, gold usually gets ready for a run until September. Frank, let's talk about the recent mining results that came out, positive results for Q2, and uh, M&A activity also soaring in the sector. Do you expect this to continue? I think the mid cap stocks are going to get gobbled up by the big cap stocks as long as they have production with a profile to expand. Uh, I think that this is where the opportunities are because peak gold appears to be set in motion and we're going to see supply restricting, whereas global money supply will continue to grow at a rapid rate. All right, Frank, what's your touchdown pass going to be this week? What are you eyeing that could really move gold and silver prices? Well, PMI came out today, and that's always an important factor. And uh, I think if that's interesting to look at before the, f the rest of the week, I, unemployment numbers will have the biggest impact on interest rates. So U.S. PMI was, was attractive, nothing great, but very attractive. So we saw 10-year government bond yields, bonds yield rise slightly. But I, I think you'll look at these unemployment numbers on Friday. Frank, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next week. Happy investing. And thanks for watching this edition of Kiko's Gold Report. We'll see you tomorrow.